I'm going to do a talk about Power BI. Who's heard about Power BI before? Who's heard about BAM? Who uses BAM? Who doesn't use BAM? Who thinks BAM is kind of like outdated? Everyone, yeah. <laughs> OK, now I'm going to show you some fun stuff. But first, I'll just like easily go through myself. I'm a TSP in Microsoft Norway. So I joined Microsoft January 1st. Before that, I was an MVP. And by the time I kind of accepted the offer, I got an email from my MVP like, you're not an MVP anymore. I'm like, oh, damn. Uh, I'm a funny guy, usually. Uh, I'm, at least I'm happy. My middle name is Glad, so I, I can't go around being sour or sad. I tried that for a while, and then I lost all my friends. And then, uh, I'm just kidding. So I got three kids. Uh, we recently got three more, but they're ducks, so not like real kids. Um, I'm a hardcore BizDoc admin. Every now and then I do some drag and drop development. I know a lot of you are drag and drop developers here. How many admins do we have? So that's like the hardcore BizDoc guys. How many uh, developers, drag and drop developers? The rest? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you got a lot to learn. Um, you can talk to these admins. You saw them raise their hand. They know a lot about BizDoc. Uh, this is kind of like a, a regular BizDoc setup like an application where you have dragged and dropped different receive locations and then systems are talking to each other and all that stuff. And it's kind of split up to different parts. So you might have like incoming stuff from somewhere, somewhat like SAP uh, or your in-house line of business systems, CRM, ERP. And then you might have some RFID not that everybody uses that anymore, I think. Who uses RFID for BizTalk? One head, two? And Nino, yeah. <laughs> Nino has RFID and BizTalk at home. <laughs> and then you might do some orchestrations, right? Something's happening. You're enriching the message. You're doing something. I've seen people debatch in the orchestration, right? Um, you all know what I feel about that. Uh, but things happen in the orchestration as well. And then you send this out to someone or something, and, and then every, every now and then someone is smart, and they decided on actually monitoring something. Some people think they're smart, and they're like basically using the tracking for everything. <laughs> like, yeah, before and after for poor processing, I want to track my buddy. And um, the biggest message I've ever seen going from BizDoc is 96 gigabytes. And they wanted to have like tracking, archiving, so they decided to just turn on everything, right? It doesn't work like that. You want to track what's needed, and you want to use the BAM. Then again, you can't really show BAM to uh, like your CEO or your manager. It's like just a bunch of numbers and tables, and it's not like really nice to look at. But well, I'll tell you how to fix that. So again, if you don't use BAM, start using it. Um, for this demo, I got a lot of help from my daughter. Um, she's like the BizDoc dev back home. She's really good at drag and dropping. Um, I'm more the admin guy. Um, so she's also using BAM a lot. Uh, I also do BAM. You can use the tracking profile editor, so you can just drag and drop there as well. Super easy. Um, what is BAM? Do you guys know what it stands for? Right. Business activity monitoring, monitoring the activity stuff going for BizDoc. And again, like the guys who didn't raise their hand for using BAM, do you use the DTA, the tracking? Yeah. But do you use it for tracking or do you use it for like storing messages or the tracking data is basically just the tracking data. And every now and then you have something important going through and you might want to log it. So that's when we use BAM and not tracking and storing the body of the message, for instance. And Power BI, it's simple. It shows numbers and data in a nice view. It's like graphs, and you can get maps, and you can make them move around, and you can hit buttons, and stuff happens, and managers are super excited. Like, I hit US, and then everything about the US is filtered out, and it's super easy, user-friendly. And the best of all, you use one program to do it all. So. I usually ask people, like, why are you not using Power BI for BizTalk? And then I get, like, uh, you don't know about it. You know nothing about the product itself, so you haven't really played with it. That's the same thing for me. I didn't really play with it until I 
joined Microsoft and my manager says, oh, you have to go to this client and sell them Power BI. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is Power BI? Right. You have to figure that out. Your role is a data platform guy, so you need to be like a level 400 of BI, SQL, everything on Azure and BizTalk. I felt confident about the BizTalk part, but like BI, SQL and Azure. Have you guys seen all the functionality on Azure? Uh, and then we come in and uh, you don't use spam. We have the event log. <laughs> we store important information in the event log. <laughs> and uh, who, who does that, by the way? Yeah, I see one hand like, yeah, <laughs> nobody's looking. And then I see a lot of people just smiling and they don't, they don't even bother raising their hand. I know who you are. <laughs> or you don't know Excel. My, my father-in-law, um, he has an iPhone. He's really excited about his iPhone. It's like a smartphone. He barely knows how to text. But he has, a, he has an iPhone and he knows how to use Excel. My, my grandma, she's getting old. She doesn't even have a laptop, but she can use Excel. So I'm pretty sure you guys can use Excel. Although even for me, like using these simple cables is kind of hard and projector and all that stuff. But yeah, I kind of know Excel. It's numbers, it's tables, it's pretty easy. It's, it's not even code. Uh, and then you got people like, what is a graph? What do you need a graph? We go into people seeing like they have the big data warehouses, it's just numbers. And there's something about the way you look at stuff, the way you will in interpret the graphical view compared to actually having just data is kind of confusing and it's, it's different on how you look at it. So you might love to watch numbers and error messages in the group hub, but that won't bother your manager, your CEO, or whoever else is up in the system that wants to know what's going through BizTalk. We all know for everyone not working with BizTalk, BizTalk is a black box. And if it works, don't touch it. If it doesn't work, call everyone you know and fix it. So the new thing Microsoft is now, out, it's in some preview now, it's available for everyone. For a while it was just available from the US. Obviously we had workarounds for that. Uh, but now it's available for everyone to try out. It's basically a dashboard online. You can upload files easily, you can connect to anything. And um, you can go and look at it on your iPad. You know, Microsoft, we love everyone. So we'll include the iOS people, we'll include the Android people, and eventually we'll include the Windows Phone guys. <laughs> uh, Power BI is loved by management. They literally love it. It's so easy to use, user-friendly. They have their dashboards. It's just pinning stuff, and it's super easy. And they go, yeah, yeah, man, I do a lot of work. You should have seen my dashboard I made this day. What they don't know is some BizTalk guy in the background actually created all the queries, made all the stuff be alive and available for him, but he's the guy making it. In the end, he's gonna be super happy. He can see the numbers, and when you come in and ask, like, I need a new server, no problem. Will I have Power BI? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and it's pretty, pretty cheap. If you have the, the premium one, it's $10 per user per month. You can go and try and compare that price with all the competition we have. Nobody's going to beat us. I've learned that from the guys selling licenses. So my role is not selling licenses. It's just the only thing I can remember about the Power BI when it comes to the cost. There's a freemium stuff. You can still do a lot with the, with the stuff without paying. The Power BI designer is free. Let's go, go back to this one again. Things that is special in BizTalk and Power BI is kind of like something you build on top of BizTalk that can grab data from anywhere. So yeah, you might have a lot of this data in your CRM, in your line of business systems, or somewhere else. So maybe you can go and grab all that data from there and stop using BizTalk. But then again, there's every now and then something happening in the orchestration you might want to log. So you have it in BAM specifically for BizTalk, like for instance, some score rates or uh, anything else you might do in the orchestration, like when you're enriching a message, like how long does it take to actually transfer this message through BizTalk? So you can also go into the tracking database and grab data and then show it nicely to your managers or to yourself or your team. Um, so I have kind of like a scenario I built up over time. Um, I'm going to show you a small one today. It's basically a system that sells something that is super expensive. 
and uh, it keeps getting shipped out, and so every now and then nobody picks up the package, so it's being shipped back again. So BizDog is basically the hub or the notification or the integration platform, the middleware to take care of all the orders coming in and out, all the shipment statuses. So for me as a BizDog guy, it's easy to go in and read the BAM views. I can kind of understand. I know that shipment status two is maybe shipping or shipment status eight is in transit. But that means nothing to my manager, nothing to the rest of the team. They might have that somewhere else, but putting that on top of BizDog is a lot easier than joining a lot of different systems. And especially for us working with BizDog, it's easy to use BAM. Who agree? Start using BAM, is it easy? All the admins is nodding their heads. None of the developers are. Like I said, talk to the admins. Now, using BAM is super easy. So if I have the time, I'll show it. I only have 11 minutes left. So this is kind of like a typical view in, in BAM. Uh, this is from my, I did have some problems with the uh, internet connection, so I decided to take some screenshots, but I'll show it either way. So this is my orders, uh, it's a customer ID, order ID, and the order price. For me, as a best guy, I have no idea who the customer is. I don't know anything about what's in the order, or the only thing I kind of know that there's an order ID and there's a price. And the same thing with shipment. So I see the shipment status, the ID, the shipment date, and then the reference back to the order ID. So some of these orders have a lot of different shipments. Maybe it went back and forth, what really happened. I can go in and I can take a look and I can see shipment status five, I know that means something. But for the rest of the team or for other guys, it means nothing. So, oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome. How will I be? What happened? It went on full screen on my, let's see if we can. I'll give it a try to remove the duplicate one and then just get one screen. Let's see if it works. Now. Oh, that looks nice. Not really. So basically in the background here, I have my Power BI designer. It's a freeware, you can go and download it now if you want to. And what it really does is creates the data set for my Power BI dashboard. I can go easily in and I can say, go to my database, it's a SQL Server database, or I can go to my Azure databases, I can go pick up files, I can go pretty much anywhere, we have Marketplace, you can go and find stuff that's bought. You can go to the Oracle databases you have. Um, if you do the old legacy one, we have Power Query in, in Excel. You can go on Twitter and you can start logging. We saw stuff on the app services about Twitter and getting the Twitter messages. We can pretty much do the same thing here. So you can go and grab a lot of stuff. For this case, I'm gonna go to my databases and I'm gonna go to my SQL Server database. And it's not like it's hardcore to do this. See, I still haven't written any line of code. Um, then I basically write the name of my machine. I hit OK, and I'm going to get a question about security um, or not. Since I already asked, they're not asking me again. What it gives me is information about all my databases on that machine. So what I can easily go in and do is, in this case, I've created my fake CRM. It doesn't have that much rows in it, but it has my shipment status name. I can go into my BAM primary import and you will get a bunch of views. So the thing is, you get the views, you get the store procedures, you also get the databases. So depending on what you want to get, you can go in and decide. So I'm just quickly going to show you how easy it all is. And you get like that predefined preview of it. Imagine having this in BizTalk. Just like, if I do this, what happens? Oh, you get this message out, perfect. Not that I do drag and drop development. So I can start having fun and using the stuff I gathered and then uh, create a report where I can go into my query 
and we can see I did not get the database I wanted. So I'll go back and ask for it again. Remember to tick off the boxes for the databases or the views you need. You guys are so silent. That's either good news or bad news. Let's see. Let's take my box and then load. So we'll start going grabbing all the data. Uh, eventually it'll be finished. It goes pretty fast. I think there's um, a couple thousand rows in here. I can go down to my query again and I can hit my merge. Basically, I can say these IDs should reflect these IDs. If I now wait a minute, and we'll say match eight out of the first nine rows, so I'm happy. I can easily go in and I can expand the databases I merged and I can decide what I want to have with me. So I'll go in and I'll just say I just want my shipment status. So when it's written and it's not really anything else, we can take maybe the order ID as well, just for the fun of it. Eventually, you finish off, and you can go in and you can check all your order IDs, and you can see what the actual shipment status is. And you can continue merging this, enriching it. You can go in and you can check the order IDs. You can connect them to the customers, and then eventually you'll get something you might want to use for, for creating your data set. But as I've shown you, this is fairly easy. You can go in, you can grab whatever you want from whatever source you want. And um, when you've done that, let's see if I can do some more magic. You can upload the file, and then you can start playing with it. So what I've done here is I basically uploaded, and this is only for my orders, so not the shipment status, but the orders coming in and click on one of these tables, it will dig into this stuff. If I made a lot of views, I can still have them accessible up here. And um, I can start seeing what state, uh, the order count for that state, how much I sold for that specific state. So if I now go up here, I don't, I'm not gonna start zooming. And I click on one of them, the rest of my graphs will gray out the stuff I'm not viewing, and I can go and I can see that specific one being highlighted. And if you manage to figure out, like, this is the one I really enjoy, I can hit pin to dashboard, and I can go back to my Contoso orders, and it will be visible on my dashboard. And you can go back, click in, and go back and forth. It's kind of like the funny part of it. You don't seem excited. Man, are you so used to having like just that number standing down there? And who's gonna try this? Yeah. So who, who, who thought Power BI is hardcore stuff? Like hard to learn, like I thought it was. So who's used Power BI for BizDoc before? Uh, yeah, one. I love it. So now the rest of you guys are gonna go and try and do it, right? Thank you. <laughs>